Hello multi-multiplying memory makers. I'm Ralphie here in the Bothy and welcome to Ralphie Review 1001. And a big thank you to Whiskey Nose, that's K-N-O-W-S, not N-O-S-E, uh, for the more mention. Um, welcome to the Bothy, welcome to the home of alternative, unorthodox, unofficial, um, unapproved whiskey reviews and this is what the internet's all about by the way the internet is such a game changer and so much has changed in such a short space of time that has been heavily influenced by internet activity and the growth in appreciation and demand for global quality spirits, for sipping, for slow consumption, um, has absolutely rocketed because people around the world, when looking for a second opinion, some advice, a little bit of experience, a little bit of reference, all they have to do is go online and they'll find a lot of it's available. And this is what my channel does. And my channel's been doing this for 14 years, since February the 6th, 2009. And I'm coming back to the first whiskey I ever reviewed. And... Although review number one in my channel is in fact Talisker 10 year old, it wasn't actually the first review that I recorded. I recorded a review of Glen Breton 10 year old Canadian whiskey from the Glenora distillery. And one reason I started my channel was that as an active member of Glasgow's Whiskey Club I'd got into quite an interesting conversation with some of the other club members about the Scotch Whiskey Association's attempt to force through lawyers' letters, letters and legal threats to force a Canadian distillery to stop using the word Glen and within the whiskey club we found this to say it was bizarre isn't really doesn't really cover it um, there was a there was a mixture of sentiments there was surprise that in a country of the world which regularly has Glens because Canada has got a lot of Glens it's not just Scotland Ireland's got glens, Norway's got glens, New Zealand's got glens, and yet the sheer arrogance of the Scotch Whiskey Association to try and persecute a small Canadian distillery for having the audacity to badge itself in a way which the Scotch Whiskey Association perceived as causing confusion to the whiskey drinker. What really jumped out at us in the whiskey club, particularly after we'd had a few whiskies, was, whiskies, was the cultural supremacist arrogance of a certain class class of people in Britain. The old British Empire mentality, which is frankly racist and ugly and that's an opinion and judgmental intolerant arrogant conceited insensitive nasty spiteful vindictive unpleasant uncompromising inconsiderate you know how many more words do I need to use? 
I think you get I think you get the gist of it here. And not only that, it's the sheer arrogance that the dumb, stupid, blind, ignorant, idiot consumer, the consumer. That's that's how we're supposed to to view ourselves. Would look at a bottle of whiskey that says Canadian collection and has a maple leaf on it and it says in the box it's Canadian and we would confuse this with being Scotch whisky and yet not a whisper, not a flicker is, is said when English distilleries use the word whiskey, W-H-I-S-K-Y, and surely the dumb, blind, stupid, ignorant, arsehole consumer. And, you know, yeah, I'm, you, you can tell I'm quite passionate about this. I make no apologies. The idiot consumer, the schmuck consumer, would be so steered and blinded that they're going to conf confuse Canadian with whiskey with Scotch whiskey simply because it says the word Glen. It, it just, it made me really angry and it actually fired up my first review. So I want to say thank you first and foremost to the Scotch Whiskey Association for giving me the starting line motivation and incentive to record a whiskey review and this was a thousand whiskey reviews ago a lot has changed now but even now the the clumsiness of British cultural arrogance has manifested itself again as another Canadian distillery recently got caught up in the crosshairs of the sniper rifle of the Scotch Whiskey Association in for daring to use the word macaroni in relation to a Canadian whiskey brand when in fact the Scotch Whiskey Association considered that macaroni uh, would be confused by the blind, dumb, ignorant, uninformed, dumb consumer as being Scottish, when in fact, historically, Macaloni is not a Scottish name, it's an Irish name. You can't make this stuff up. The, the, you know, the absolute detachment and remoteness of senior decision makers in positions of authority in Britain, at times it literally beggars belief. Um, but I tell you what, this is very nostalgic because as much as that cultural arrogance manifested itself, when it just so happened that it was through the Scotch Whiskey Association, but it's certainly not exclusive to them, far from it. It's a real British cultural habit, which increasingly just is really bad currency, really shows diminishing returns. And it brings me back, back round to this whiskey that started it all in. It's better than it was first time round. Now, regrettably, the original owners of Glen Breton Distillery, just a small distillery in Nova Scotia, Canada, you know, Nova Scotia, New Scotland, uh, south of Inverness, Nova Scotia, with a huge number of expat Scottish people who were by and large forced to emigrate to Canada due to the industrialization of the UK and the Highland clearances and the lowland clearances and the general clearances of the 
population from Scotland that was surplus to requirements? You know, read your history books. Many made their home in Nova Scotia. Many found it to be New Scotland. And it gave them for a while a freedom and a space to breathe and a space to grow themselves that they would never had a chance of never have a chance of having in Scotland, the country that they were forced to leave. But I come back to this distillery and sure the original owner eventually his health broke down as a result of the the lawsuit against him. But he stood his ground and Glen Breton Distillery won the court case to call themselves Glen Breton Distillery and to call their whisky Glenora Canadian single malt whisky. They won. And not only did the Scotch Whisky Association lose, Scotch Whisky lost. The time that that happened, Scotch Whisky began to lose some of its reputation, and deservedly so. And so much has changed since then. And when I'm sitting here, if I'm allowed to sit here, in 14 years time or whenever, with Ralphie Review 2000, I'm going to review in 2001 this whiskey third time round. I'm going to revisit this distillery because it's a very important milestone in my journey. And sure, this lovely resinous, creamy, almondy, grain-rich butterscotch nose. It's, it's lovely. I could go into a lot of detail about it, but I don't really feel the need because I'm not here to analyse this single malt. I'm here to encourage you to go out and buy it. And particularly if you're in Canada, and I know I've got a lot of Canadian malt mates, Please support your local Canadian distilleries first and foremost. It's not just Glen Breton, there are other Canadian distilleries. If it's got the Canadian flag on, if it's got the maple leaf, prioritise that whisky when you're buying whisky. Please do that. Support your own country. Support your culture, which has come under such unreasonable assault from vested commercial interests who have betrayed their indifference and unpleasantness towards an international mutual beneficial accord. Cheers. This is the 10 year old, spicy, lovely little vanilla citrus note. The only thing is, it's bottled at 43%. If this was bottled at 46%, that's all that, it's only change that needs to happen. The whole reputation of Glen Breton Silly would absolutely surge because it's a sign of the integrity of delivery. And I know that taxes are heavy in Canada in the same way that they are in the UK, but just add even an extra few dollars on the top of the price, people will buy, because ultimately with quality spirits, it's the delivery of the quality of smell and taste. And you'll notice I've not said really that much about the smell and taste, because with this review, it's just more about the experience, the nostalgia, the, the way I met this whiskey when it first appeared in the British market, the circumstances in which I connected with Canadian whiskey. And the result was I attended two Canadian whiskey festivals. Um, and those are the only two festivals outside of Scotland of, of the UK I've ever attended. Both were in Canada. And that's the end of it. I mean, I'm not attending anymore. Certainly no plans. So what mark would I give this? It's a malt mark. 
I'm going to give it a very credible and very decent I'm not going to give an extra one of that because it's actually this is a this is a better whiskey than first time round. There's quite a lot of varieties of this. In fact, there's even a 25 year old Glen Glen Breton now available in Canada. So I'm going to give this a malt mark, Canadian malt mark of 83 out of 100, and. It's nostalgic. It's it's a bit weird actually. I last tasted this whiskey 14 years ago and I never thought for one minute that I'd ever get to the stage that I'd come back to to revisit it again and yet as soon as I opened that bottle and poured a dram and I let it sit in the glass for five minutes and it just everything came back to me from that first recording which I subsequently put out as Ralphie Review number two because I reckon that as primarily a Scotch whisky reviewer I should put out a Scotch whisky review as number one but as number two it's Glen Breton and it's an honour and it's a delight to come back to this distillery knowing that it has not just survived but has, de has thrived despite the ugliness and nastiness that it received from an organisation which allegedly is there to represent the interests of its members and in this instance in my opinion and it is an opinion absolutely failed to do so categorically failed and not for the first and not for the last time cheers completely unbeated fudge cereal grainy biscuity citrus with almond and a super ripe pear note in the background there you go pop back again for Ralphie review 1001 in which I shall be talking about <laughs> Do you know, I've given myself two or three options as an extras, but I'm really going to talk about, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do with this bottle of whiskey next. There we are. That's a new one I've not done before. We'll see you soon.